Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to dynamically allocate an array of structures in C++ and how to access individual elements of that array, how to um, access individual elements of the structure, or individual fields within that structure, and uh, how to properly clean up after yourself when you're done. So let's go ahead and get started. I've went ahead and created an empty project in Visual Studio and got my main all set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started writing some code here to show how this works. So let's go ahead and create a struct and we'll just call this struct uh, foo. Okay, and foo is just some generic struct, right? It's just for this example. Don't really care much about what it contains, what it actually is. Let's just store an integer x, right? That should be enough for this example. I mean, you can put as many additional fields in here as you want, right? And then the behavior is going to be the same no matter how many fields you have or what you want to name them, okay? So now that we've created this struct named foo, let's now create an array of these things using dynamic memory allocation, right? Static memory allocation, you know, if we wanted to statically create an array of foos, we could just say something like, you know, foo, um, foo array, and say, all right, we're going to have 10 of these things, right? So that's static memory allocation. Okay. But we want to use dynamic memory allocation, right? And dynamic memory allocation, remember, is memory that is assigned to your program after your program starts running. So to be precise, to be technical, it's memory that's allocated on the heap as opposed to the stack, right? So, you know, you would use dynamic memory allocation if you wanted to ask the user how many elements to make this array, for example. So, you know, well, why don't we do that? Let's let's throw that in here. You know, right? we'll, we'll we'll let the user um, determine how many elements this is going to be, right? So let's create a variable called size, okay? And then we'll at, we'll ask the user. We'll say uh, enter the size of the foo array, okay? And then we'll read that in using cn. Okay, and then in order to dynamically allocate this array of foo structures, we're going to need to have a variable that holds a memory address, right? The memory address of the first byte of the first element of the array. So what are we going to call it? Well, we can call it, um, how about just P for pointer, okay? Now, what kind of pointer are we going to create? Well, we're going to have to create a pointer that holds the memory address of a foo. Okay, so type foo, but pointer, right? So we have to rem remember to have an um, asterisk here to indicate that it's going to be a memory address of a foo, not an actual foo, right? So let's go ahead and initialize that to null because it's always a good idea to initialize pointers to null when you're not using them. Okay, now. The user at this point will have told us what the size is. So now let's create a new array of foos, right? That has size elements. That new keyword is key to the dynamic memory allocation, right? That is the operator that is saying, hey, um, uh, operating system, can I please have some memory? And the operating system might respond, well, how much memory do you want? Well, we're going to say, well, we want to have size elements where each element is the size of a foo, right? So that's what this is doing. Now, thing is, though, is that this will create that array, but we won't have any way to access it. Why not? Because we don't have anything to reference it with, right? So new is going to return the memory address of that first element. So we need to store that memory address somewhere. So what are we going to do? We're going to put it inside of our pointer that can hold the memory address of foos, right? Okay, so once we've done that, we can use that array the same way we would a statically allocated array, right? So I could go through and I can say, um, I could have a loop, for example. I could write a loop that looks like this. Right? I less than size, I plus plus, and then I can access each element within the foo array 
and we want to assign to um, that elements x field, right? Because remember, these each one of these elements is a foo, right? And a foo has an x inside of it. So we're going to say p of i dot x uh, equals zero, right? So what we're doing is we're initializing, well, let's make it more interesting. We'll initialize each x to 99. Okay, so that's what this for loop right here is doing. Okay, now once we've done that, we can confirm that it works. Let's have one more for loop here. Okay, i less than size because there's size elements of this thing. And let's display to the screen the uh, contents of each element's x field. Okay, and how about we just put a space in between uh, each one so they don't all look like just, uh, so we won't end up with a line that's just all nines, right? So we can show that there is a, there is a multiple values here from each element, okay? All right, now, uh, since we're asking the user for a value here, we're gonna need, in order to keep this pause, this window open, we'll need to uh, eat up that new line character so let's ignore the new line character that's going to be left over after they hit the size. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile and run this thing. Oh, one last detail, almost forgot. We dynamically allocated this array, right? So for every new, remember when you're using dynamic memory allocation, for every new that executes, you have to have a delete that executes. Okay, and the delete that we're going to need, we're going to need to have angle brackets here because we're creating an array, not just a single foo. And so what we're saying is, is delete all of the memory that uh, is in that chunk that begins at the memory address that's stored inside of P, right? If you don't have this, we would have ourselves a memory leak. So you have to remember to delete your array uh, when, you're, when you're done with it. Now, uh, just a note about that, you know, when you say that you're deleting the array, you're not physically removing the array from your machine or anything like that. You're not taking those values out of that memory location. What delete means in the context of dynamic memory allocation is you're saying hey um, operating system i'm done with this memory feel free to make it available to somebody else or to some other process right and so um, until that memory location is is given to somebody else those values are still going to be there i mean you could still access them um, later on in your program they'd still be there it's just now you're saying hey i'm done with this feel free to reuse this memory location uh, for something else if that's confusing you, don't worry about it. This video isn't about dynamic memory allocation. It's about how to dynamically, uh, it's not about the tech, technical aspects of dynamic memory allocation anyway. It's supposed to be just about, hey, how do we dynamically allocate an array of structures? Okay, so let me scroll back up to show you, you know, what our struct was. And all we had was a single field in there. Okay, this is static memory allocation, which is what you're probably normally used to. That's memory that's allocated when you run the program, when you first start it, right? Like compile time, uh, as they say. Here we're asking the user, well, how many elements, right? Um, you know, if we're going to create an array that has size elements, well, then we're gonna have to use a type of memory that can create the array after the program starts running, right? If we don't know the size of the array before it's created, we can't really create the array off of that size, right? That's why static memory allocation doesn't work, but dynamic memory allocation does because with dynamic memory allocation, you can get as much memory as you need after your program already began running. And so this program is gonna already have begun running, so we can ask the user, how many elements do you want, right? And so that gets put inside the size. And then we can use dynamic memory allocation, which is what you use to get additional memory after the program has begun running, right? So after the program started running, we've asked the user how many elements they want, and now we'll use dynamic memory allocation to make that happen. And once the memory has been dynamically allocated, you can use that array in the same way you would a statically allocated array. There's no difference at that point, okay? But you have to remember when when you're finished, before your program terminates, you have to mark that uh, memory that was assigned to your program as you know no longer being used. That's what this delete statement's for. Okay, anyway, so that's like a summary of everything that we just did. So let's compile and run this thing just to demonstrate that it works and make sure that I didn't have a bug in here right there and make a typo. Okay, cool, so no compile time errors. So let's enter the size of the array. We'll just do five. Okay, so that's gonna go into size and then new foo size is gonna create an array of um, five elements of five foo elements. Each element has an X field in it. Okay, so I hit enter, five happens 
and now I see the 99 five times. Why? Because line 23, 24, that for loop initialized each one of those elements is X field to 99. And then our second for loop down here displayed the contents of each one of those elements is X field. And then once we were done with that, or once that happened, then we deleted that array, we freed it up, and then you know our cn.ignore and cn.get is pausing this thing. So as soon as I hit enter, uh, the window's gonna close. Okay, hopefully that you found that helpful. If you're a student of mine, please feel free to send me a follow-up email if you have any questions, stop on my office hours. Uh, if you're not, or even if you are, you found this video useful, please consider hitting that like button, maybe hitting that subscribe button, you know, give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And uh, hey, it's encouraging, right, to, to, to see people appreciating uh, your work. So, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.